Dr. Mayberry here, finishing the upper limb with the hand. Okay, so probably on your lab practical, I would only put an articulated hand, but I can ask questions about the hand. Okay, so I could ask you what order the carpals are in, uh, even if I don't just tag a carpal and say identify which one this is. Okay, so that's how I usually do it in this class, uh, but I could change my mind. So you do need to know these. So we'll start with the carpals. The carpals are your wrist bones. Okay, there are eight of them. So remember we had the radius and the ulna. So we're starting at the distal end of the radius and ulna with these carpals. There's two rows of four in each row. So the proximal row is the row that's gonna articulate with the radius and the ulna. And there are a lot of ligaments in here binding all of this together. So if we start with the proximal end, we say that, you know, we don't say, there are four bones in it. So we, I like to start with the thumb side. So the scaphoid is the first one. So the scaphoid, we say the scaphoid has a scoop. Okay, so if you need to identify them individually, that's the scoop of the scaphoid. Okay, so scaphoid is first. The lunate is next. Lunar is the moon. Lunate looks like a moon. Okay, that's the lunate. The triquetral is the next one. The triquetral has three surfaces, tri, three. So it actually has three articular surfaces and you can put your fingers on those three surfaces. Uh, when I took this class, we had to be able to reach into a bag and identify these just by touch. I won't make you do that in my class, but if you are planning to go into forensic anthropology or bioarchaeology or anything like that, you actually do need to be able to do that. So you could practice just by touch. Uh, so that is that triquetral. And then the pisiform is very tiny. Um, all of these carpals that I have don't necessarily come from the same person. So if you had one person, the pisiform would be this, this tiny little bone compared to the rest of them. Uh, however, the one that I'm holding is slightly larger than it would be for say, in comparison to this lunate. So the pisiform, we say, is a P-shaped little guy. Uh, it has one articular facet on it, uh, so it is the smallest of the carpals. Okay, so that is that proximal row, starting with the thumb and moving toward the fifth digit. So we call in anatomy the thumb is digit one and the pinky is digit five, uh, which is why I like to start with the thumb. So moving back to the lateral side or the digit one side uh, of the wrist, we have the trapezium, okay? The trapezium has this facet that looks like a saddle on it. I don't know why this works for me, but I think of the circus when I think of trapezi, like, like I don't know what that's called, like trap, I almost have it, starts with a trap. Uh, and I also think of riding horses there, so there's a saddle, this is a circus bone to me, and that is how I remember it, and that is probably really dumb, but that's what works for me. So that's the trapezium. Uh, and then the trapezoid. The trapezoid looks like a boot. Uh, so I remember trapezium comes first because if you alphabetize them, trapezium alphabetized it comes before trapezoid, okay? So the trapezoid looks like a boot. And then we have uh, the capitate. So the capitate, capus, is head, so it's got a little rounded head on it, capitate. Okay. And then we have the hamate. The hamate has a hook, not to be confused with the scoop of the scaphoid. Okay. So that is that distal row of carpals, so we're getting you know, closer into the hand, more distal. So the way to remember them uh, in order is to have a mnemonic device. There are several out there. Uh, the one that I learned first uh, is some levers try positions that they can't handle. And then I learned that when my TA said it to me, she really said some lovers try positions that they can't handle. So either one of those works. Uh, I apparently just didn't have a dirty enough mind when I heard that the first time. So there are others that go in the opposite direction and some that I've probably never heard of. So if that one or two don't work for you, uh, then you can find another one. But you do need to know the order of the carpals. Uh, I may not put an individual one on your test, but you need to know the order. So, wrist bones, carpals. The body of your hand, those are your metacarpals, okay? So the metacarpals 
all have this round distal end. Okay? You don't need to know each individual digit for my class. In some classes you do, uh, but you need to know that if you see this one rounded end, the, the proximal ends are actually not particularly uniform for the metacarpals, but if you see this big rounded end, that is a metacarpal. Okay? Uh, I will say that I will not confuse you between the hands and the teeth on my, or hands and teeth, that would be tricky, hands and feet on my test, uh, but there are similarities between the bones in the hands and the feet, which we will talk about when we get to the feet. Okay? So after the metacarpals, we have rows of phalanges. Okay? Phalanges are the fingers. So all of your five fingers have a proximal phalanx. Phalanx is the singular of phalange, phalanges. Uh, so they all have a proximal phalanx. The proximal phalanx, because all of the metacarpals have that one rounded end, the proximal end of the proximal phalanx has one rounded facet. Okay? The distal end will have two articular facets that will articulate with, in the case of these four fingers, the intermediate phalanx. Okay? So there's that. Now only these four fingers have a middle or intermediate phalanx. The thumb, digit one, only has a proximal and a distal, okay? So that middle knuckle that you don't have on your thumb, uh, that is that middle or intermediate phalanx. So because the distal end of the proximal phalanx had those two articular facets, the proximal end of the intermediate phalanx will have two facets for those and the distal end will also have these two facets, okay? And then the distal phalanx looks creepily like a fingernail. So that is basically what your fingernails are over. Uh, there is no distal articular facet because this is the end of your upper limb. Congratulations, you have reached the end of your upper limb. So you need to know, um, I guess pun intended, the bare bones uh, of these hand bones. It's not as difficult in this forensic class uh, as it may be if you took a complete osteology course because we do have a lot of other things to cover later in the semester. So I do take time out of the hand especially um, to, to devote to more forensic techniques. So make sure that you know these things that we just talked about and you know the order uh, that these carpals go in and feel free to ask me any questions in class about the upper limb in its entirety or, or something a little smaller detailed. Okay, see you in class.